2023 was one of the strangest years yet when it came to Cyberpunk 2077 modding. Over the past couple of years, the modding scene had started to get quite mature. Some epic new features were being added into the game, but 2023 became weird as CDPR also released a bunch of official content as well, leading to many mods having to go through their own sets of overhauls, and some mods just got integrated into the game naturally. But even with all of that in mind, 2023 was still an incredible year for Cyberpunk 2077 modding, and in this video I'll share with you what I view as the top 10 mods to come out over the course of 2023. Starting with a mod that many of you already have with Equipment EX. Equipment EX was not only one of the most popular mods to release this year, but also one of the most popular mods to ever release for this game. It hooks into the more recently added outfit system to create a truly dynamic transmog system in Cyberpunk. So now, you can not only create tons of named outfit combinations, which you are able to easily switch to on the fly, but it also implements more customizable clothing slots. You can have different armor pieces on your head, mouth, and eyes for some truly unique looks, and these are things that simply aren't possible without this mod. And to me, this is really the best kind of mod, expanding on an existing system in Cyberpunk 2077 in both a meaningful and useful way. But in a very similar vein, we also have Cyberware EX, which implements a variety of additional Cyberware slots for you to take advantage of. The main version of this mod adds in a secondary operating system slot, so it'll enable you to use quick hacks with either Sandivistin or Berserk, and this creates some incredible incredibly unique moments in gameplay, using quick hacks while time is slowed or just neutering enemies before you go in for the kill. But this mod also comes with a secondary option, where you'll have a bunch of added slots in each of the major categories of cyberware. And ever since patch 2.0 and the cyberware rework, this mod has become far more balanced even though at first glance it may seem just overpowered. Now since there's a hard limit on cyberware capacity, those extra slots are only sort of useful. And even further, nearly all of the new slots are locked behind specific perks, several being higher tier perks so you won't be able to just unlock them until you're later into the game. So as a result, you're left with a surprisingly balanced mod here, but it does add in a ton of really fun new gameplay possibilities. Because being able to use more cyberware and having more choice in how you use your cyberware is just really fun in Night City. Out of all of the mods you find on this list, you may have the most fun with this one, just as a result of some of the wacky combos that previously weren't possible. And for me, any mod that really ups the fun factor in a meaningful way is a gigantic win for the game. Enemies of Night City is an absolutely epic mod that dropped earlier this year, but only this week was updated to 2.0. At its core, this mod will overhaul your encounters with enemies across Cyberpunk 2077 overall. Many enemies in the game will now have new abilities added to them, and with many new weaknesses or counters added as well. This could be something as simple as a new chem that will buff themselves up or even reset the cooldowns on some of their abilities, but also more specific and custom things like being able to break your hold on them, being able to blend with the environment, or even just getting hit from toxic ammo that certain groups of enemies will use. One of the unique parts of this one is, enemies didn't just get buffed to their offensive abilities, they also got new faction-defining resistances as well. So if you go up against the Voodoo Boys, you may find that they're now more difficult to hack if you're a Netrunner, or if you come up against some Militech members, they're going to have some extreme burn resistances, so if you're relying on that, you're out of luck, but also use flame ammo so they'll set you ablaze during the fight. And Sixth Street got enhancements to their cyberware, giving them the ability to stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with you while time is slowed. But this mod finds itself in an interesting situation, because as you might imagine, much of this functionality broke with the release of patch 2.0, this requiring a near full overhaul of the mod which just released a couple of days ago in a beta version. The same ideology is here, but with some more features and general AI enhancements. Like enemy AI being smarter now, it'll actually use things like suppressive fire and grenades far more often. You'll also notice enemies here using toxic ammo against me. Enemies will properly use Sandivistin to get up close to your face and just gap close in general now. When an enemy discovers a body, they'll now call over to some of the surrounding enemies who will also come to an investigate. So all of the enemies will become alert against you. And even enemies like Netrunners can use a far wider array of quick hacks against us now. And some even have quick hack reflect options so you can barely even quick hack them. Overall, this mod is a comprehensive upgrade to enemies in Night City, and in many ways this just levels the playing field so enemies have access to many of the abilities we've been using this whole time. But then we have a mod that truly overhauled the experience of living in Night City with survival system. At its core, this is a simple one. Your character now needs to eat, sleep, and drink, and if you neglect these things, debuffs will be applied to your various stats, and eventually your screen will even start being affected. What really takes this mod to the next level is how well integrated it is into the game. Every food and drink item in the game will now list how much it's going to replenish of your various stats. And you can see your current values for hunger, thirst, and tiredness on
on your HUD with this nicely made widget. And even when you go to sleep, you'll be able to see how your stats will be impacted as a result of the time passing. So this mod has this nice balance of it does make Cyberpunk 2077 a more hardcore game just due to its very nature, but thankfully this isn't done in a confusing way as this mod keeps all of the needed information readily available and easy for you to access. And of course, if you don't attend to your needs, bad things will happen. You get things like less stamina or lower carrying capacity when you're thirsty, less HP and even slower HP regeneration while you're hungry, slower move speed overall from not being properly fed, or even less RAM and slower RAM recovery for quick hacks as a result of not sleeping enough. And if any of that just sounds horrible to you, thankfully you can turn it off as this mod is fully configurable. Mods like these are incredibly polarizing, but for those who are interested, they are incredibly powerful as one mod can dramatically change up how you play through the entire game. But mods don't have to be big to be great, and in 2023, Cyberpunk 2077 got a ton of smaller mods that are incredibly handy, like stealth finishers. With patch 2.0, finishers got a total overhaul and some incredible new animations. Stealth finishers will make it so while you're sneaking up behind an enemy, you can use one of these finisher animations to immediately finish off and take down that enemy. And really, that's the whole mod. It really is quite simple, but at the same time, it makes me use stealth finishers so much more in gameplay. Perhaps I really am just that vain, and it looking nicer makes me use it more, but for me, it makes what was otherwise a forgettable and underutilized feature one of the most fun aspects of combat in Night City. Another game-changing small mod is Quick Hack Sort by Slot. In Vela Cyberpunk 2077, the order Quick Hacks appear in in this hacking menu is reverse chronological, so where in these slots you place Quick Hacks doesn't actually matter at all, but instead, whatever the last Quick Hack you enter in is is will always be the top quick hack in the hacking menu and so on working backwards. That is just incredibly confusing and often means to change one quick hack you need to change all of them. Both quick hacks sort by slot, the order of these slots actually determines the order of this menu, making the entire process simple and straightforward. This is one of those mods where the way it works in vanilla cyberpunk needs far more of an explanation because the mod is so much simpler, and really that's why it's such a great addition to the game. But then we have Stealth Runner, which is definitely a bit of a weird one for this video. From the first day I used this mod, I knew it was going to be one of the best of the year, as what this will do is implement a new optional stealth objective to nearly all of the jobs in Night City. So you might be doing a gig and see an optional ghost objective off to the side, which means you must not be detected by enemies at any point during the job. There are a variety of these and even some more specialized ones, like Hero, which requires you to save the civilian held captive on jobs that feature a civilian held captive, or even No Touch, where you don't attack enemies at all but still are able able to be successful. But this mod's really well integrated, so as you're doing the job, you can see which of these objectives is still available. As soon as you fail it, it'll no longer appear on your HUD. And if you do successfully complete jobs with these optional modifiers, you'll get a nice HUD pop-up at the end showing what unique rewards you got. Because yes, if you do complete a job like this, you'll get bonuses and even access to an entirely new stealth-focused perk tree that adds in a ton of cool new features that particularly benefit stealth players. So it has this nice double effect of not only rewarding stealth gameplay, but also giving you new incentives to play more stealthily. But most of you probably can't use this mod right now because unfortunately it hasn't updated for 2.1 or even 2.0 yet. The author is working on an update and does periodically post their progress, but frankly it's such an incredible mod that even though it doesn't work on the current version of the game, this one still needs a spot on this list and to be shown off. And believe me, once the update does drop, it'll likely be better than ever. Night City Alive has quickly risen to be one of my favorite favorite mods for this game, and this is definitely one where once you add it, you kind of can't go back. This will basically add in gang patrols and literal gang jobs around Night City. So now, as you're driving around Watson, you might find the Maelstrom in some trucks for their distribution business. This will apply all over Night City. You'll find gang members in sports cars or even regular cars going about their day, but when things get fun is when they aren't just going about their day. Because as a result of all of these new gang patrols, you'll occasionally find naturally occurring gang fights. Sometimes Sometimes this will be between rival gangs who just happen to run into one another while doing their jobs, or other times between the NCPD and a gang member as they encounter each other on patrol. So this creates some very organic fights all across Night City. We so often hear about this being a scary and dangerous city, but with this mod it'll actually feel that way. And the mod even ups civilian aggressiveness as well so they could jump into some of these fights also. But then we have a singular mod that will allow you to make your Cyberpunk 2077 significantly more wacky and fun 
with Prime Weaponsmith 2.0. This adds in the ability to customize crafted weapons with all kinds of hilarious, OP, and sometimes just bizarre combinations. So now as you're crafting, you'll be able to edit several aspects of that new weapon, yielding insane results like fully automatic shotguns, double-barreled weapons. Yes, this AR is literally shooting two shots per trigger pull and has some insane ricochets. Oh yeah, and it poisons enemies with each and every shot that lands. And hey, don't worry, melee weapons aren't forgotten here. You can increase the number of swings per flurry and even adding this cool dash on swing to gap close for enemies. Your experiences with this mod will very much so be determined by how outlandish your customization desires are, but it's another one of those mods that despite being OP at moments is just incredibly fun to use. It turns crafting from something that is kind of helpful to something you'll fully devote resources into just to see what you could come up with. And as you can imagine, there are some incredibly powerful builds and synergies with this one and some of the new overhaul 2.0 perks. But for me, there is an incredibly clear and obvious winner for mod of the year for 2023. And this would also be mod author of the year if I actually did that type of thing, as I think the single best mod to release for Cyberpunk 2077 in 2023 is Deceptius Quest Core. A framework mod being the mod of the year may seem odd until you look at all of the cool things this mod enables. Over the course of 2023, Deceptius discovered how to implement quests into Cyberpunk 2077, and has been using this to incredible effect over the course of the year. It created the opportunity for deeper moments with some of your favorite characters. You could go on another date with Panam or Judy, and in some cases, it could even lead to a bit more than just a date. Totally new romance options were implemented into the game, like Rita Wheeler or even the Flaming Crotch Man, if that's more your taste. And just recently, he used this to address the single biggest complaint I saw for Phantom Liberty with Aurora Romanced, or perhaps even just reliving some of these romances in a lore-friendly way with Lizzie's brain dances. Head over to the bar and buy unique brain dance experience, making the location even more immersive. This mod uses Quest Core, but was actually made by a totally distinct mod author, really showing how impactful this has been in the community overall. And it wasn't all romances. This allowed us to get closer to characters in other ways too, like visiting Jackie's grave, or even just heading to the bar for a drink with some of our friends. But there, of course, were a lot of romance mods, being able to invite the existing romance options over to your house to hang out, which CDPR literally added into the game officially with the latest update, but then Deceptius took this even further and expanded on that native functionality with more options. So this framework and really this mod author themselves have added in some incredible new experience and really memories into Night City for all of us to create and experience. But that said, if you're looking for even more ways to enhance your romantic relationships in Night City, check out this video where I show you the definitive romance overhaul.